Hey, everybody. I'm Sean Robinson. I'm Carson Grubosh. Sean just had to click a box to consent to being recorded. <laughs> I did. We're all about affirmative consent here on Living the Line. Uh, there's that blue box. Okay. Um, we did this in Zoom. I don't know if you guys can tell. Uh, so today is the second installment of Paper to Pixel to Paper Again, uh, the ongoing tech series. And um, you guys might know that I wrote um, a version, essentially like a first draft of something along these lines um, many years ago for another site. Um, and uh, I'm sort of repurposing and redrafting this stuff as I'm going. And so I'm um, collating this week's installment. I actually ended up combining several different installments. So I really wrote a ton before and I'm writing a ton now, uh, trying to really make this series comprehensive. Um, and each of the videos that we're going to be doing that go along with the different things are going to be demonstrating some aspects of what we're talking about. Uh, and you might wonder why we didn't just make a big video series about this and actually explain everything in detail. And there's two, basically two reasons for that. One is because, um, you know, seeing something written down, especially with technical information, it's a lot easier to be able to just stop and copy and paste or, you know, file it away or refer to it later if it's all written down. And second is it would just be tremendous, basically time budget issue if we were to essentially make like a documentary series about um, image reproduction uh, visually. And so supplementing it with the video seemed like a pretty good way to sort of meet halfway in the middle there. Um, but like I said before in the first video, if there's something that you wanna see, uh, let us know. Uh, but today what we're gonna be talking about is resolution and scanners and uh, resolution and uh, line art and general optical sharpness. Um, so Carson, this is something that you and I have talked about um, in a lot of different contexts before. But when I say optical sharpness, do you have any kind of, <laughs> where, does your, where does your brain go? Well, it is something that put us down a rabbit hole that hopefully will, hopefully I'll get, I've, I've been mentioning it. I'm talking to the two neuro ophthalmologists. Um, I'm trying to make you bigger too, and it's not working. So I apologize <laughs> if in the video it's recording my head getting bigger. I'm trying to make Sean's head bigger. Um, I continue to think about that and I don't want to get down that rabbit hole because I feel like that's its whole own video, but I continue to think about the definition of resolution that you gave of something standing out from a background versus the way I think of resolution, which is like the kind of amount of information available, uh, you know, within, within a space. So like if something stood out from a background, like you always give the example of a bar and if it's going mm -hmm. vertical, it doesn't really matter what resolution, screen resolution, I guess, or resolution space maybe it's at, it's gonna resolve against the background. But if you tilt it, then that changes, right? Yeah. Um, so what's, <laughs> I guess what's confusing to me is that bar is basically full resolution at 70 DPI or at 1200 DPI in terms of standing out against the background but I can increase the resolution space without any uh, per perceptual change in the resolution from the background on that particular thing. Um, yeah. So I mean, I tend to think about it more, I guess you probably call it resolution space. You know, there's more yeah, because, information in 300. Uh, yeah, this is a basic issue of uh, mathematical sampling, sampling or digital sampling of any type. Uh, and basically, uh, when you talk about a digital system, you are sampling something uh, at a certain amount of slices per unit. So if you're talking about sound, you're, you're, sl you're getting auditory slices uh, repeated in a certain amount of time. Uh, if you're doing uh, images, those slices are generally made up of some type of uh, grid or array. And um, in the digital land, which we're in right now, uh, those that grid or array is pixel based. So Carson just made us a nice image here that is uh, a, a limited pixel array of 72, uh, 72 pixels per inch. Um, and um, if you make an image that is uh, alongside that grid, it that resolution space is not really gonna be much of a limitation to it. Uh, but as soon as you start sampling uh, a curve, 
or sampling, you know, uh, different types of shapes that that basically interact in that array in a different kind of way, uh, then you you start to butt up. Depending on how small your your object is, you start to butt up against the limitations, the resolution limitations of the image. Um, not that you really need to know very much about this in order to uh, in order to you know get the information that we're going to give you in the article uh, today. Uh, but the, the basic information that I cover in the article is uh, talking about how when you are working for something, an image that is going to be screened, uh, an image that's, in other words, going to be reproduced with uh, dots uh, in, at the printer or whatever printing output device that you're going to use, your resolution can be much lower than an image that's going to end up being line art, like this one that Carson is uh, making for us right now. So this image, um, if you're going to reproduce this uh, as sharp as you can possibly make it, you're going to want to have a much higher resolution image, and it's going to end up being in a one-bit space. That means that each pixel is going to be either on or off. You can see that the edge of this image right here is actually fairly fuzzy, and that's because this program, uh, Photoshop, is applying anti-aliasing to that edge. Uh, the reason for that is because that anti-aliasing is going to help make the image appear smooth when it's being filtered through a lower resolution space like this screen, or if it was going to be printed, then you're filtering it through a different type of resolution uh, image because the, the screening process is another type of system array. Um, so that's a little bit of background information about uh, resolution and why it matters in different size systems and things like that. Uh, but one of the principles that you can kind of take away from this really cursory discussion of it right now is basically the finer the material that you have and the more that material resembles line art that is black or white images the more resolution you need and the more important it is that you avoid screening your image when you're printing it so i'm going to say this several times uh, in the video and probably i'll say this many times uh, in the article as well, avoid screening your line art. Line art should not be screened. <laughs> this is one of the most basic- And this is, this is why right here, <laughs> when I got rid of that gray fuzz, right? It like got totally wicked. Well, yeah, so, so um, what, what you had before you, uh, before you did that, um, softened it up and made it look as though it was, uh, you know, what, what you lost in sharpness you gained in sort of pseudo resolution. So um, even though you're in the same resolution space, basically converting it to a bitmap makes it more obvious where the jaggies are. Uh, so, so what happens is when you make an image like this and you convert to a bitmap, you should be using a wider image resolution space. Uh, specifically, uh, 1,200 pixels per inch is a sort of default, high, quote unquote, high resolution line art image 1200 pixels per inch um is a sort of default resolution line art image and the and um a lot of the stuff that i submit uh to printers uh, when i'm working with offset printers is actually double that resolution uh 2400 pixels per inch uh which might sound like a lot but for a line art image is not really it's it's not a it's not a large file uh because when you're talking about line art you're talking about one bit of depth that means either the pixel is on or the pixel is off the pixel is black or the pixel is white when you're talking about a color image uh, each of those pixels can have a whole wide range it's a it's a wide range image so each of those pixels represents uh you know if you're in eight bits uh space it's 256 colors uh if you're in you know a wider uh per sorry 256 um on or off colors per channel, per color channel. Um, anyway, uh, I don't need to go into all of these different different things here, but the basic idea is that uh, when you're talking about resolution in terms of image making, uh, you are, what you're talking about depends greatly on the actual source material. You're making a very fine line drawing that is gonna end up being a quote unquote high resolution one bit image and something that is going to be you know reproduced with a color screen is going to be a comparatively much lower resolution color image that has a wider bit depth 
you know, color, you're talking about 24 bit color, eight bit color per channel, which gives you a wide variety of uh, different colors. Uh, but the thing is, is that when you're making a drawing, uh, line art or otherwise, you don't actually have to scan it at that high resolution. Uh, and so the article details some of the reasons why that is. Um, but basically, it, it would be absolute madness. You know, I, I said that I, I, like, for instance, the Cerebus or Strange Death of uh, Alex Raymond, the printer received that as one bit, 2,400 pixel per inch images. Uh, and that's because we used extreme enlargement and uh, shrinking. We used very, very extreme uh, fine line work. And you combine all of those things together and you can get something that essentially looks like you're holding the original, you know, a couple feet away from your face. Um, Printing is quite extraordinarily uh, advanced from where it was before. And even though you can't always see it when you're looking at the results, uh, printing itself has just improved. I mean, year by year by year. Uh, it's just all of the sort of knowledge of how to get the best results that's sort of, you know, by the wayside sometimes. Um, anyway, the point is, if we had scanned every uh, image, every page image at that resolution, that would have just been absolute madness and uh, wouldn't there's not really a point in doing that just because you're outputting a line art image at that resolution doesn't mean that you have to scan it at that resolution uh, what you're able to do is you're able to scan an image in color and then you're able to sort of process it however you want to and then that final output that you do is going to be the high resolution one bit image and uh, I've, I've sometimes had people sort of ask me about that, like they're, you know, calling me out on a secret, like, well, why don't you just scan it at the higher resolution? Well, every time you're, de you're doubling your resolution, you're quadrupling your scan time. Because yeah, and when when I came, I came down to visit Sean, uh, and Sandy, I'm pulling up. Sorry, I, I am paying attention. No, it looks <laughs> no. sometimes but I'm looking no. for I'm looking for the art. Um, so I, I went down to San Diego uh fo foolishly i guess because we were able to scan the rest of mine locally but i just thought sean had such a better scanner we're going to take it all down and it was a good reason to visit um but we did scan my pages at 1200 dpi yeah. <laughs> and we had a good long time to visit because of it <laughs> <We> yeah <did. laughs> it delayed our visit to the burrito place for uh, much longer yeah uh, than it needed to because it was good salsa yeah, this is one of those things where, you know, I knew we were going to want to hang out and chat. And uh, so I, I felt like there was no harm done in actually making a full resolution scan. Um, and so we really went overkill on this and scanned the actual at original size, uh, a color scan at 1,200 pixels per inch. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I wasn't going to have the artwork in my hands again. Uh, we were chatting. It wasn't a big deal. Um, but probably could have gotten identical or near identical results by having half the resolution. In fact, all of Dave's page were scan pages were scanned at um, 600 pixels per inch, color 600 pixels per inch. Uh, unless you are doing an extreme enlargement of something, very, very rarely are you going to need to go higher than 600 pixels per inch. And I mean, let me just tell you, this is some of the most detailed line art that I've ever seen. Uh, but the thing is, you know, it's going to be reduced. Uh, and that color and that anti-aliasing on the edge uh, actually uh, enables you to get that upsampling in a way that is utterly faithful to the original line. In other words, if you were to microscopically enlarge this page printed, the contour of that line would be exact to the contour of the line that he drew. I mean, you can get almost too faithful, you know, you can really get in there. And um, for instance, you can see how some of those brush strokes are actually a little broken up on the edges uh, there. That's not something that you're going to perceive <laughs> if you're looking at this, uh, you know, in real size. <laughs> if you're just no, holding you, this up. I didn't see it like when I was making it either, because I mean, I probably right. saw it like that big when I was making it. It's 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 that we were drawing such tiny lines that it was the brush was skipping across the tooth of the paper really was right. what yeah. was happening <laughs> right um yeah i mean there was there was instances i remember 
I don't think it was this page, but there was instances where I was like working on the like the hatching in her eye. Uh, and I remember telling Dave, like, I know I'm going pretty small because I can't see that it's a line. I just see that it's getting darker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and He's he said, perceiving the value. Yeah. Yeah. I'll open the page that that was on while you keep talking. What, yeah, did, he, just what did he say to that? I, I don't even remember. I think yeah. he, he didn't seem particularly impressed, but uh, <laughs> I was being competitive because he made such a big deal about small lines. It was this image right here. Yeah. I remember like I don't know like it's getting darker or no it was this it was it was on her face here uh, it's getting darker but I can't see the individual lines yeah. right and you know as a pen and ink artist I mean you're creating value through the image it's not like each line is intended to be appreciated one-on-one -on -one or whatever that's um, probably the smallest line I ever made <laughs> it's so tiny i don't know how you got that to print <clears throat> um yeah so so uh basically what i'm saying is um if you are you know thinking about this stuff um from a sort of preserving your artwork standpoint uh you know i i would always make a, a color scan of your artwork at 600 pixels per inch um you know you can go overboard with that if you want to. Do you want to This actually... one's only at 600. This one, this one yeah. we scanned at 600. Yeah. Right. And you can see that, that line you were talking about, that finest line is actually just slightly blurrier than uh, some of the other things. And that's what happens when you have a resolution space where you're butting up against the limitations of that resolution space. Um, so I this... was drawing, I was drawing one pixel wide at 600 <laughs> dots per right. inch, which I don't know what that makes. Like that means I could fix 600 lines in an inch technically. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're so. going to have one of those drum off competitions, you know, like where they can't count the drum strokes that somebody does in like a, you know. Yeah. I mean, if anyone wants to know like how obsessively small we were drawing, <laughs> we were drawing so small that we could fit 600 strokes in one inch if we butted them all up uh, yeah i mean this this page was particularly interesting for that reason because this is a drawing that dave did and that his original is like a full full size page so this is already right. like a 50 percent or more reduction of that and then i was trying to be line for line accurate to his original so he was drawing insanely small lines and then i like had the weird task of drawing it at half size and I, I right. did that a number of times, like with his covers too, where he had a whole cover and then I was draw stupidly drawing a character holding it, you know, like that big, uh, at some point you give up some of the detail, but anyways, yeah, that, that's just an, an instance of like why, uh, I regard Sean so highly is because I was making lines that were one pixel wide at 600 pixels per inch and he still got them to print. <laughs> Well, j just for the hell of it, do you want to take this to uh, a final image? Uh, yeah, I think that would be very instructive for people to see it. Uh, okay, great. We'll do, uh, we'll this do is going to be okay. skipping ahead a few uh, a few steps in terms of the video. We'll go ahead and embed this in the earlier uh, in the earlier uh, article. Uh, okay. But 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 yeah, let's go ahead and and take this to a final image just so we can see what that looks like. So the first thing we're going to have to do is so Carson scan this in color. Good boy, Carson. Nice job. Yeah. I think you scanned uh, this one actually. Oh, right. I scanned it. Yeah. These so are I Sean's scan scans. <laughs> good, good job, Sean. Um, and uh, one of the reasons that you scan things in color at all times is because you never know what it is that you might have to deal with. And if you scan in grayscale, your scanner just tosses out two of the color channels randomly. And so in this case, you can see the ghost image of the uh, underdrawing that Carson printed onto uh, the paper. And so we're going to get rid of that as a first stage here. So Carson, if you'll go up to image adjustments, black and white filter. And uh, this filter allows you some amount of control over uh, the different color bands. And uh, you see if he takes the color band, not all the way up, because if you take it all the way up, it's going to be whiter than the rest of the paper and you might um, have some issues. If he takes the cyan and the blue color bands all the way up, it gets rid of most of that noise. You can see we still have some uh, magenta and possibly green and yellow noise. So as he's taking these bands up slightly, it's getting rid of 
um, most of that color. And there we go. That was looking pretty good right there. You can see we have just a little bit of hair noise left in there. Back away. Uh, uh, at the time, Carson was printing with a printer that was using full color, even though it looked kind of bluish. Uh, it was actually using, you know, all color. Um, and it got rid of these, like you can see whatever that scuff marks I made or something like I can right. drop that out totally. Yeah. Those went yellow. And that's usually the way that you can, uh, that's usually the, the rationale that I have for keeping a color scan or using a color scan is because scuffing and things like that uh, are oftentimes color dependent. Uh, like when I'm working with uh, image that was done with screen tone and the screen tones more than like 15 or 20 years old, the screen tone is oftentimes yellowy and green. And so you can use this color adjustment to make sure that the screen tone density balance is still appropriate. Um, so Carson's saving. Good job. Oh, no, I was going to see if I could pull up like an old. Uh, oh, yeah, no, let's, strip. Let's, let's not worry about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. Any, anyways, I was just gonna see if I could find one with the yellow. Oh yeah, screen does that on stage have a? Uh, there's got to be one in this folder. We can cut out me looking. Yeah, there's a screen tone. So I'm not sure if uh, this is gonna be. Um... A resolution that's going to enable us this trick to be too, super effective. But let's go ahead and use the black and white filter on this. That's a good example. Man, that's some heinous screen tone. And yeah. it looks like that was maybe put out with rubber cement or something. Yeah, like tone all over the whoop. And there you go. Look at that. Like magic it is. Yep. So that you can see that this filter is, I mean, Photoshop's gift to artists. Um, and uh, that's why right there, why you always scan in color. That's just a fantastic demonstration of it, Carson. Thank you for finding that. Yeah. Um, and uh, when you're dealing with a high enough resolution image where you can actually see the individual dots, the screen tone, uh, you know, a dark screen tone will actually reproduce, if you just translate it straight up, it'll actually reproduce too dense. Um, so anyway, so we've used the black and white filter here, uh, but this is still actually not, um, a grayscale image. So we need to go up to image mode and convert this to grayscale mode before we do anything else. God damn it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Super uh, professional with me. <laughs> so, so now that we've, we've converted it to grayscale mode, Photoshop has thrown out two thirds of our data. Uh, Cause before we had a, uh, each channel had eight bits worth of information. Now we only have one channel. We only have the grayscale channel. So if you will zoom in, Carson, on that tiniest line. Well, and I went from 193 megs to just so people are looking at like the kind of difference in file size that you're talking right. about from, from what did I say? 194 to 63, right. 64. So yep. that already shrunk it quite a bit. Okay. So uh, go ahead and zoom right in on those eyes. I think that's a good place to work. Uh, when I'm doing this, by the way, I almost never do this on a page by page basis. I almost always do this uh, on a few sample pages and then I make, a, I make an action, I make a Photoshop action, and then I can run that action on an entire book's worth of image. Uh, you know, this stuff is, this is what computers are made for. Yeah, so uh, I, I could have been in here, created a new action and been recording this whole time. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, we're not going to do that today, uh, but we, we will at a, at a later stage. Cool. Uh, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to, uh, with that tiniest line in mind, we're going to knock out a little bit of the paper color and we're going to beef up our, our black scan a little bit. So if you go to image uh, adjustments, curves, uh, I, I mentioned this to Jim when I did the uh, cartoonist kayfabe interview. The reason you use curves instead of the levels command is because uh, at some point, <laughs> Adobe seemed to have broken levels. It doesn't record correctly in actions anymore. Oh, and that sucks. So, I always use the levels. <laughs> yeah. So um, you can see the, uh, the, the white point there on the left-hand side. So you just made a midpoint there, Carson, is what you did. So leave okay. that alone. Okay. Um, grab that right there and we're going to try to knock out the paper without knocking out any of the line and so and i'm at just... i'm at 200 by the way too so like yeah. i'm at 
I'm I'm really up in there. Yeah. So just a teeny bit, like right there, because here you'll see the line starts. To exactly. Disappear. Start the line. The lines that are right on the edge of the resolution space start to disappear. You don't have to knock out the whole paper here. We're just probably, making sure that probably like right there. That that might even be a little a little too far. Um, like right there. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then your black. Go ahead and bring that uh, up to the basically get rid of all that. You see how there's a gap there before the information starts? Oh, to like here. Basically. That looks good. Yep. Or or right to that lo lowest peak. Or like uh, right to, to the right yeah, outside. You got the it. Peak. Right there. Okay. Yep. And if we go too far, that line goes away and you'll see some of the lines get like too too thick. Right. And I'm I'm losing stuff into the white as well. Yeah, that's what's called clipping. Uh, and so basically you want to avoid doing any clipping and, and we got to actually get rid of your midtone there, Carson, too. Oh, oops. your midpoint. Oops, oops, oops. Okay. Let's do that again. Also, by the way, while I pull this back up and we're talking about clipping, clipping is a really great rap band. So go listen to clipping. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like them. Is there a reason that you would do the white first and, and the black second, or does it matter which order you do it in? No, like it doesn't this, matter if. If you're not that's making a pretty a obvious like point right there because I can look at the bottom of the peak and that's then right. I would go okay. Well, the, it's it's the opposite on the white one there. So you're looking for the trough, like okay. the basic, uh, yeah, like right so there. The, okay, you got it. I'm gonna go a little bit more because I still see some speckles. Great. Okay, and I don't have the midpoint because I didn't stupidly grab the middle. Now. That's right. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. So that's gonna keep that stationary <clears throat> then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so. This looks pretty good. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to bring ourselves into the full resolution space. So this is going to be the space that the actual size we're going to print it at. And that doesn't mean that you can't adjust the size after the fact, but you want to try to nail this down at the beginning. Uh, in the case of Strange Death, I think that we ended up reducing, I don't know, 70% on most of the pages. Yeah, um, I don't know exactly what the. So let's go ahead and do that now. And go, so. uh, sixty percent is typical for American comics, and and uh, and you know it really just there's a wide range of things. But uh, so what we're going to do is um, you're going to change that to uh, percentage, and uh, this gives you the general. Um, I'll just do sixty. Yeah. Uh, no, let's go ahead and do, do 70%. Okay. And then uh, go to resolution. And you're going to change the resolution space now to 2,400 pixels per inch. And I leave now, like resample I said, on. And, and yeah, and uh, change the resampling style. We're going to use bike or preserve details. Is there a technical reason for that? Yeah. Uh, so, and Reduce That's noise should be all the way down. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, preserve details is uh, is basically like an algorithmic resampling. Um, it it does a good job of guessing the type of detail okay. uh, that you want to bring to it. And so when it's just line art like this, or when it's a color image, preserve details does a better job overall of uh, essentially guessing what it's going to look like to enlarge. Uh, By cubic smoother is excellent or bicubic um, is excellent when you are enlarging something that has screen tone on it. And I end up using okay. bicubic for uh, screen tone because the preserve details doesn't really do a good job of guessing that a dot is supposed to look like a dot still. <laughs> <laughs> Those damn computers uh, don't understand circles. <laughs> right, exactly. That's exactly right. Um, circles, you know, the, the lovely uh, sampling grid that you have in, um, the previous world of printing uh, is the anathema to the gridded world of pixel sampling. Okay, that uh, makes sense. Which is why we have to, one of the reasons that you have to have such a ridiculous resolution space. By the way, lots of pros are going to be seeing this and say, 2,400 pixels per inch, I've never submitted anything like that. Uh, well, that's the resolution that the plate uh, the plate setter at your printer works at. This is the resolution that they actually use to create the screens that they print color images with. Uh, so this is what they like. <laughs> so guess yeah. what I like. <laughs> so, so guess what, pros? 
your stuff can look better and that's why we all love sean uh well yeah it's it's, it's weird uh, there are lots of images that it would not make a difference uh to do it 1200 pixels per inch or 2400 pixels per inch but a book like but this when you draw when you draw lines <laughs> that, that are one that's one, right. one six hundredth of an inch it matters so yes. it starts uh, to matter okay so uh let's go back to that eyeball again uh so we're now in the resolution space and now our job is to make sure that all of these details are actually going to get past our conversion to bitmap when we convert this to a bitmap all of that nice softness on those edges is going to go away and we have and to make sure that all this line uh you're on the wrong uh, face oh th yeah the am i <laughs> <laughs> i don't even know my own art thank you sean you're welcome this is another there we go there's that beautiful line uh this is another reason why <laughs> even though i could learn all of this stuff i leave it up to sean <laughs> Well, once you've drawn it, I mean, who wants to do this, right? Yeah. Uh, there's another reason to script it, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that all of these things are actually going to get past of our bitmap filter. Um, because we're going to turn this into just on off uh, pixel image. And if we are uh, not careful, we're going to lose those finest little details. And, you know, our artists drew them in, right? We want them to have them in print too. And so, I cause uh, neck and hand damage doing it. So <laughs> damn it, it better be in there. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to give this a blast of sharpening using the very basic Adobe Photoshop sharpening filter. This is the only sharpening filter you're ever going to need. Um, unless you're working with like low resolution color images or something, you're going to go to sharpen unsharp mask. It's called unsharp mask uh, because that is what uh, this dark room procedure used to be called, and that really is what it is. And they would just make a blurry copy of it and essentially combine it with the original thing in such a way as to give it a sharper edge uh, to it. Never done that dark room uh, myself, but you get a little idea of how that works here. The amount that Carson is fiddling with is the intensity of the effect and the radius, uh, which you should bring down, Carson, to like, let's say 1.4 pixels, something like that, is, is the width of the effect. So you generally, unless you're trying something special or unless you have a really blurry image, you actually generally want to have that somewhere between one and two pixels. And the threshold go is... The other way, just so people can kind of see it changing. Turn up the amount if you're going to do that so that you can see it. Yeah, no. <laughs> then make a threshold, well, take the threshold all the way down and it'll exaggerate it more. So the, the threshold down there is basically how much of the image is it trying to grab? Um, so because this was actually a fairly sharp scan, this radius thing is not affecting it quite as much, but the blurrier your scan is, the more it's affecting it. And uh, essentially you can think about unsharp mask is like a contour, uh, what would you call contrast adjustment? So um, what you generally want to start with is a low threshold, not so low, low that it grabs a bunch of noise, but yeah, about generally like 15 levels or something like that. And then the con the radius right where we have it. And then the amount, try about 200 or 250. And what you want is for all of those details to start getting sharp. Uh, you, you want that edge, each of those edges to start to look like um, a on off line that doesn't have a lot of um, gray tone in it. If you see a bunch of gray tone in it, that's probably not gonna survive converting to a bitmap. And uh, generally what I do is I do one pass with somewhere, the amount somewhere between 100 and 200. And then I knock out some paper and then I do another pass. We'll do it at 200. Great. That looks pretty good right there. And then and we're going to do so, it. Just so people, let's go back and forth. Fuzzy, sharper. Okay. Right. And then go ahead and do another uh, curves adjustment. And we're going to knock out just a teeny bit of the paper again. Watching and that's that nice because that's finally getting rid of the, that extra. You got it. 
Uh, the the extra dots that we were getting from my printer printing i was printing i thought just cyan but it was it was printing all three man black doesn't really look like it needs to be messed with much right because we haven't done anything that's affected it okay um and so it's still up where you had it before and so just double check that you haven't knocked out any of your fine lines back and i'm pressing shift so i can grab while I do this, which is that nice pretty... of them that they let me do that while I have a control <laughs> window open. That looks pretty good right there. Okay. Okay. And let's zoom out uh, of the image Still a little got bit. got some schmutz in the eye, but that's okay. A little bit of schmutz. And then um, we're going to do one more pass of sharpening. In fact, you could, uh, now that we've knocked out the noise, Carson. Yeah. You can, you can do the, uh, yeah. So, Carson's gonna OCD. get anal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so now, now that we've knocked out the uh, noise and we've knocked out the paper, we can do a little bit more um, uh, sharpening with a lower threshold now. So do one more pass at the sharpening, um, but this time we're gonna lower the threshold so it's getting everything, because basically everything that's left or almost everything that's left is information now. Uh, information no, the, so you can't just do that because if you yeah, do that yeah, it'll yeah. apply it the same way yeah. so you actually have to go back into the filter one more time so don't control like said, f it <laughs> right and then lower the threshold just a little bit because now everything is information so now we're basically wanting to grab almost everything and then the amount you can probably that looks pretty good right there yeah and just so people can see it's a little bit sharper even more mm -hmm. so Okay. okay, go ahead and hit okay. And now uh, let's pretend that we were making an action for this the entire time. Uh, what we can do now is uh, we're going to set up the rest of this image so that it's ready to go for when we're actually ready to you know, do anything else we're going to do to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, a new layer we're going to call cleanup. Person needs to learn to take the time. <laughs> name his layers <laughs> and then and then we're going to make um something called uh, a threshold layer so carson if you go up to layer up up here uh-huh see this is good to have a total dummy that you can <laughs> control new new adjustment layer and then uh, threshold okay go ahead and hit okay do I need to name it? No. Okay. No. And this threshold layer gives you a preview of it as a bitmap. Oh. So tricky. it actually is a really poor preview. Um, I don't know why they did this, but um, Photoshop is written in such a way that when they are previewing, it, it doesn't use the full resolution of your monitor. So Carson's fiddling with the, uh, the threshold control right now basically you almost always want to leave it at 50 percent unless you're just doing adjusting from a color photo or something like that and the um, reason i started doing that is because it looks like so much is lost right it looks like it but go ahead and zoom in and take a look go into any particular place at the hundred percent well i adjust so i've got to put this back at well 50 is not gonna i'm gonna cancel that because okay. I started messing with it and there's not okay. a 50%. Yeah, okay. So we'll do that again. Okay. So that's that's me not messing with it at all. So you can see that even with um even with the uh care that we've taken right here, we still have a few areas that are not quite capturing all of the uh, lines right there. And so uh, the basic tactics that you would tactics that you would use for something like this, this is once again, extreme, fairly extreme example. Um, but the basic tactics you'd use for something like this, if it is globally losing information like that, you want to keep on uh, making curves adjustments and sharpening with a lower threshold until you get all that information in. But if it's only select areas, what you can do is select those areas individually and blast them with a really, really heavy level of sharpening.
Well, and now that I've got this as a layer, I could you can look. turn it on and off. Yeah, and we'll see. Some of that is due to just that skipping effect of it, right? Uh, being a very light line. And once again, we're so far in right now, you're not really reading it how the image reads in print. Um, but basically, you want to sort of challenge yourself when you're doing this. Like, what's the finest that I ever work? What's the the thing that might be lost here? And then you want to take a look at um, trying to write your script so that you are adjusting for that most extreme example there. So really, we cost Sean a huge pain in the ass by drawing so small because this would have been <laughs> way less back and forth <laughs> if we hadn't have drawn so small. But this is why the strange death of Alex Raymond looks as beautiful as it does is because Sean took the time to get this right. So what are you thinking as a first pass here? Does it seem like... It seems, it seems like, like we're losing stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Especially here, but um, I would have to back up however many steps. Right. Because currently that looks like stippling with some gray schmutz in between. Right. Um, whereas, so oops. When it was in grayscale, let's see how that looked on her arm there it looked a little bit more like a stable line those lines did have a lot of skipping on them, but it looks more continuous there so uh that's the other reason that i would recommend that you almost always do this uh as an action and you test these things out, you know, you try to figure out, okay, which stage did I go wrong here? You try this out a few times, you save a few different versions of this action until you get something that perfectly gets the thing that you want. And then you just run it. I mean, that's the goal, you know, is that you, you, you work this out and then you do it. And as long as your scanner settings are the same every single time, you can batch process all this. You're never going to have to go back and, you know, find yourself doing this multiple times. Uh, that being said, uh, especially with really detailed line art, I find myself, um, basically what I do is I run a script like this for an entire book, uh, entire book's worth of image. And then I do cleanup on every single page individually and save them as I'm going. And as I'm doing the cleanup, I am going in and saying, is there something that I missed? I'm looking for those, I'm scouting the page and I'm saying, okay, where's the finest areas? Where are the areas where there's white, white on black? And I go through and I make sure that all of those things are actually getting in. And if they're not uh, in a certain area, you address those areas individually. In other words, I'm trying to see if I used white on black. I think I did. Yeah, very. I'm. There's some white on black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of the time, I just hatch that stuff like a total knucklehead. Uh, <laughs> Does that, does that kind of make sense? Like, you, you yeah. know, you, you look for these things as you're going. And if you see something that's not working uh, and it's a global problem, you go back to the script level and you write, you write your, your action one more time and, you know, you refine it a little bit. But generally, I find now with the experience that I've had, I can just go through and, you know, write an action like this in just a few minutes. And then I'll try it out on a few pages and I'll make a few adjustments and I'll go from there. Uh, but yeah, when I'm cleaning up stuff and I'm cleaning up the borders and things like that, I oftentimes look for those finest lines and try to, um, you know, make sure that I'm getting everything. If I so recall the, cor your, correctly. Your process there is keeping this to where you can see it well and then flip this over and like, okay, I'm identifying yes. this area looks like fine line. Zoom in on it. Turn this on. Okay, right. good to go. All right. Mm-hmm and evaluating and you can kind of be iterative with it. You can make your action uh, refined until you got it perfect. Or like I said, every page needs a little bit of adjustment. It's not like I don't do anything after I've written my action and I've run the action. You know, I'm always doing something. <laughs> yeah. And oftentimes what you're doing is like, oh, that was a really thin line and it was watery. And, you know, whatever else it is, there's a spider built a web on top of it. I mean, you know, this the you can't anticipate every single thing, but this yeah. actually looks pretty good to me across most of the page. So probably with a page like this, what I might end up doing is just 
lasso tooling a few of the finest areas and then resharpening those a little bit. Um, the, the problem I had with working with these is because you had those color things, we always had a little bit of color schmucks. And so I couldn't just nuke them with sharpening, which is what I would tend to do with something else with fine line like this. I would just, you know, really like Dave's page, I could just drop the sharpening bomb on him. Yeah, because he didn't have the color. Right. Since there's no noise to bring up. You follow what I'm saying? Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the only downside to using the sharpening, if you're using it correctly, is that you can bring up noise uh, that wouldn't be visible otherwise. Uh, but since there's no noise on those pages, because there wasn't any color printing on them, you could just nuke them, you know, uh, whereas your, your pages having that little bit of uh, color on there meant that you couldn't go to quite the same extremes, which meant that sometimes I had to do a lot of more finessing on the finest areas in order to make sure that those got through. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> well Hopefully. we skipped a, we've skipped ahead about um what <laughs> five i don't six, know i don't know what your plan was there. for today it's just once you start talking about resolution space i'm such a visual guy that when you're talking about the screening and stuff it's like oh i want a visual example of that so i'm i'm sorry if we got to i don't know where you no. were trying to go today <laughs> no that's great um, but I, I think that that, uh, that gives a, a little bit of an idea of the things that we're going to be hitting in uh, the articles. And we'll try to have at least one video per article. But the idea is that these are supplementary to the articles. Um, and really just, I don't know, <laughs> I don't have a team of documentarians to follow me around to <laughs> make, you know, the the video that would have to be without having any kind of written supplement would just be, you know, entirely yeah. beyond my editing abilities well and i think it works good like you having me work through it because i i picked up a couple of these things from working with you but i don't really know many of them so i do need that kind of that beginners like to say what why why that one instead of that one um so hopefully that's helpful helpful to people yeah. as well but now you can also see like why we care so much about this we kind of talked about that last time but we didn't have examples but you know it's like i care to have someone who's doing sean's job because i killed myself making a line that small and you know sean has had to learn to care about it because he's been being given art like that and, right. and that's the things that can get lost or made thick or chunky uh you know if people don't approach these right um, so that that's what that's how he's built this knowledge which is quite impressive and i think also it's important for people to remember your ability to say yeah that looks good is based on you having done a lot of this and mm. then printed it out and tried it it's not just like there's some obvious thing and <laughs> and <point>. <laughs> knowing that when you switch it over to the bitmap and to me it looks terrible you now know yeah that one will print out well even though it looks just god awful on the screen Right. So as much should, as you can follow Sean's tricks, you really got to go have some experience with these two to, to build a sense of where where these uh, tools are being applied enough or too little. Right. And we should say, too, uh, that uh, the converting it to a bitmap afterwards, um, that threshold is command that we added in there is just to preview it. Uh, but that's another thing that I do with actions. I just have an action where it just takes the entire folder worth of cleaned up images and turns them all into bitmaps. And uh, that's not something that I'm doing. I'm not saving each one of those individually. I just tell the computer to do it. Hopefully um, that will be its own much shorter video later. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Here's how to convert them all into bitmaps. Uh, okay, well, uh, thanks for watching. Um, please do, if you're able to support us on... Uh, Patreon, or you can make a one-time PayPal donation. Thank you very much to the gentleman who uh, made a PayPal donation this morning. Uh, it was very um, appreciated seeing that. And uh, uh, we're going to be rolling these out one a week. And uh, the videos will not always be this long, and they won't always be this uh, esoteric sometimes. Uh, we'll hit a few that are um, a little shorter and uh, just sort of have the technical stuff. But these sort of background ones are a little bit harder to condense. Um, but I hope that you all are enjoying the articles and uh, keep in mind that, you know, this stuff matters when it matters. It doesn't matter when it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. We all do our best. 
<laughs> and apologies for derailing it into a longer conversation. No, it's good. I appreciate thank it. You, thank you so much. And, and we really do appreciate the support. I think this is essential knowledge that a lot of people want and need and will get us all better books. But it, it you know, it, especially on, on Sean's part, it does take the support because he does freelance work. I, I'm a little more cushy. So um, <laughs> buy, buying his time to uh, be able to do this is really, really valuable to us. So we appreciate that support so much. Yeah. Okay, you guys have a good one and uh you know, like subscribe, etc. Make better books. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay.